Hello, everybody, and welcome to another session from the Think Tank. And I'm absolutely honored to have a wonderful team here tonight with Brian Welch leading the team. And I won't introduce everybody because they'll all do that themselves in a few moments. But we're just waiting for our Facebook feed to go live right now. So I think we're all going to sing a song together, are we guys? While we're waiting for yeah. Facebook to go, who wants to take that out? Any singers among us? See, I, I had not kept them for that. I think Darty's the singer. <laughs> Darty's the singer. Are you the singer, Darty? And you want to tell a joke then while we're waiting for Facebook to go live? Come on, Zuck, put us live. <laughs> I don't have any jokes and I'm not going to sing today. <laughs> You're not going to sing and you don't have any jokes. Okay, so we're live on Facebook. <laughs> Welcome, Facebook. Um, so we're absolutely honored to have some wonderful leaders here today with you. And I was going to say tonight, because it's nearly tonight now in Ireland, but I know you're from all over the world right now in different time zones. Somewhere it's morning, sometimes it's afternoon. But this team is going to bring you social strategies. So we're honored to have them. And I'm going to hand over to Brian now, and I'll see you on the other side. All right. Thank you so much, Ronan. What a great group. It is so good to see uh, not only the faces of the panelists on here, but um, knowing that we're able to share some strategies and some ideas with people all around the world. And um, I'm just gonna let everybody kind of go through and just say a quick hello, where you're from and what you're gonna be talking about. And then we'll jump in and just keep sharing. So um, why don't we take it away top left and just work our way around. Uh, hello everybody, I'm Brad. I'm from the UK, based in Barnsley. So in between Leeds, Sheffield. Um, we're a third generation family run business. Uh, been in business for two years. Uh, specialized mostly in boudoir and family portraits and I'm going to be talking today about uh, building funnels and funnel marketing and paid advertising and all that fun stuff. Excellent. Kia, why don't you go next? Hi, I'm Kaya Bondurant and I know uh, people say Kia, but uh, I'm actually more of a Lexus kind of girl. So <laughs> Kaya. <laughs> and uh, I'm from Kansas City and uh, in Kansas in the US, and I'm going to be talking about um, Instagram specifically, but how we craft our message uh, and how we can kind of think about it um, and strategies for that. Lindsay. All right, I'm Lindsay Bowler. I'm from the South, if you all can't tell by my accent, but um, I'm from Scottsville, Kentucky. We own uh, the Red Elephant Studio and we've been in business for 10 years. Uh, my husband and I do this together and we've been close for about a week now, but we're really working on strategies right now to stay visible on Facebook, doing that through content calendars and things like that. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Excellent, Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm from uh, Northumberland in England, the UK. Uh, I'm a photographer myself. I've been for 15 years. Prior to that, I was a military photographer. I've uh, done over 750 weddings, but now I specialize in helping photographers uh, run their business. Uh, I'm a photographer mentor, but one of my specialist subjects is LinkedIn. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about how you can really utilize LinkedIn to get seen, uh, make alliances with uh, potential clients and get your message out there. Perfect. Darty, how about you next? Hi, everybody. Darty Hines. I uh, live in Pennsylvania. Uh, my wife and I own the Sync Conferences. I manage four different social media accounts. And I will be talking about engagement now and engagement later and why it's important. Perfect. Jonathan. Hey, guys. My name is Jonathan Ryle, and I'm from Kildare in Ireland. So I'm not a photographer. I started working for 3XM full-time about five, six years ago. And I've been involved in everything from operations to client happiness to marketing and sales. At the end of last year, I co-founded Business Success Academy with Ronan. And I built our whole online course on using Facebook ads and funnels for lead generation. And I also have my own business as an affiliate where I drive traffic to other vendors' products. So I have a lot of experience in paid advertising, specifically Facebook ads. And I'm going to talk a bit about building your brand on Facebook. Excellent. CJ. Hi, my name is Curtis. Um, I'm from just north of Tampa down here in Florida. Um, I specialize in seniors and weddings. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about staying active in social media during this time, um, especially when people aren't shooting as much as they used to, um, and then kind of giving back a little bit to the community, some things that you can do um, through social media for that. Excellent. And Bradley. 
I think you already went. Yeah, yeah I, I was. Yeah, I was, no, no worries. <laughs> so we will uh, jump to Jessica. Wait, Sean's here. Okay. Yes, we'll, we'll do Sean right after Jessica. Oh, okay. Hi guys, I'm Jessica Robertson and I'm out of Ashland, Virginia, and we mostly photograph high school seniors and families. I also run Shoot It Straight with Jessica Robertson, a photographic community, and I'm going to be chatting about having an authentic voice and staying true to your brand in your social media. Excellent. All right, Sean, can you hear us and are you uh, go? Yes, I'm. I'm here. I'm. I'm gonna make it. I promise. I'm gonna make it quick. Uh, I eat darty. Um, and I just thought it real funny how Lindsay said that she's been locked up with her husband for ten days. Um, that's kind of, kind of funny. Rock that. Um, uh, listen. My name is Sean Lee. Uh, I am a high school senior photographer out of Detroit, Michigan, and I'm gonna be talking about how to stay relevant in front of your client base beyond just being a photographer. Um, and how to post that on social media. So, rock that. Awesome. Yeah, such a such a great group, and um, I don't know if Alan or Ronan want to say anything else before we jump in, but um, we we haven't really said who's going to start. But as we went around, I really, Lindsay, I'd like you to um, kind of start uh, and kick us off and share uh, some great content with us. Okay, so I made notes last night and I was showing my husband and he's like, I don't understand anything you have wrote down right now. But he said, as long as you understand it, that's all that matters. But so, um, like I said, we've been in business for 10 years and about, I guess it was three years ago, I noticed that the algorithm changed overnight. And while I've yet to master that, I've worked really hard um, to create content that I felt like was really connecting, engaging with our clients. Our goal at our studio is to create an amazing client experience. And I think you create that by starting on Facebook or social media through that. So I want to remind you all too, during all of this, it's really easy. Um, Dave Ramsey said that when we panic, you know, we freak out and we jump the gun and we do crazy things. But I want to remind everybody that this is not a sprint. This is not a sprint to see what we can throw up on social media to grab uh, clients or people to our page. This is a marathon. This is something that we have to work to pace ourselves at. And um, last week I found myself, I'd planned all my content. I'd spent a week planning content and then this happened. So I had to start pulling everything down I did. And I wanted to um, start just being visible. I wanted people to start seeing my work in the middle of all of the post, 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 post with uh, sharing and everything. So what I did before I could actually sit down and really create content for everything over the next two months, I just started posting the best of the best. I went back through all of my posts. I pulled posts from 10 years ago and just started doing throwbacks and things that you'll see that people, uh, liked or I call them scroll stoppers and scroll stoppers are just something that'll make people go back and look again. So right now, if you don't have any content that you can really plan or you're not at that place yet and you're getting ready to start, go back to your most eye catching images and post those. Um, I think that's a huge, huge um, benefit right now that you can do that and just stay, just stay visible. So, um, Right now, if you're off, if they've quarantined you to your home, we're, we've been closed, like I said, for a week as a non-essential business. So this is a great time to really start creating your content calendar. I would suggest going ahead and doing April and May. And everything you do, I want you to keep in mind your clients and who you're trying to talk to, who you're trying to reach, and how you can create this client experience through them. You want them to win. You don't want them to feel like you're selling to them right now. They want. Uh, we want to show them empathy. We want to love on them, and we want to create that experience that when all this is said and done, that whether they've ever been to us before or not, they're going to want to come to our business because of everything that we created over the however the course of however long this goes. So, um, so here's the first thing, work off your page. Right now, this is a great time to, when we all built our businesses, more than likely we did things outside our doors. We went to chamber meetings, we went to things like that. Take this right now and consider that as working outside your doors. Find your, um, your clients or different people and just say, hey, I'm thinking about you, I'm praying for you. Comment on their post, engage with them off of your page. Find ways to connect with them. 
um, pick a couple clients a day and just check on them, message them, send them a message and say, hey, how are you doing? How can I, you know, what can I do? How can I be there for you? Thinking about you. And that says a lot right now. I'm a newborn photographer, so you can imagine I have lots of expecting moms right now whose blood pressure is going way up in the middle of all this. So check on, check on those people. Your seniors right now, they are, you know, they're in a spot where they're unsure and uncertain. And I think this is a great time to just love on them a little bit. So love on your clients and love on people right now. Um, so let's talk about your content calendar right now. Positivity and motivation. Quotes, things that are relative to getting through this. Um, Self-care tips are great right now, they're gold, just giving people positivity and how like they can get through everything going on. And live videos, so many people I feel like are terrified of doing a live video because they don't know what they'll say. So here's my best strategy for live videos and I'm not, I'm terrible at the beginning and I'm terrible at the end of them, but create what you're gonna say, have an outline of that and then be on and be vulnerable. So our very first day that we closed, I got on and I just, I kind of let it all out with my clients. I was still positive, but I was honest with them and people want to see honesty right now. And I think this is a great time to be vulnerable with your clients. Tell them what you're experiencing. You're, we're human in business and the name of our business is Red Elephant Studio. So I think it's really harder sometimes for us to connect because we, we don't have a name and a face that match up, you know. It's not, it's not connected. So I think that just getting on and being vulnerable and talking to your clients, but have an outline about what you're going to talk about. So you don't ramble on and on and on. Um, that's yeah, that is, that's so important. So, so important. Yeah. Um, and humor, humorous posts right now, it's okay to be humorous. I think we're, we all need a good chuckle. One of mine that got a it, it had, a t had a ton of likes on it was it said gathering and it said take it down Karen. I mean it had like a hundred likes and a ton of shares on it so that's drawing people to my page. So that's another great one to something with its humorous and continues to continue to post your work. Um, not every hour like I was doing when we first started uh, last week but start just posting your work, put uplifting things with it, ways that you can connect with your clients, things that you can get them talking back to, questions, ask them questions, ask them how they're doing, but continue to post your work. And then um, what clients are these, this or what clients are being affected right now? Oh, well, everybody is, but a good majority of my clients are, are healthcare providers. So right now I want to work inside uh, my community to do something for these people. And I collaborated with a local boutique who's doing, she just, she has an Amazon wish list for nurses or to deliver to the hospital, things like that. Good ways to just help those people that are your clients, teachers, seniors, things like that. Figure out ways that you can collaborate with people that are going to benefit some of these, your clients right now. Um, so thank you so much. I'm going to, I'm going to stop you there and just okay. jump around. You That's are fine. so passionate. I love your energy. Um, so it looks like we're going to have to have another call another time, sure. right? Cause we can all keep going. Um, yes. thank you so much, Lindsay. I'm going to go to Darty next. I think that'll be a nice segue from, uh, what we just heard. Yeah, actually that's perfect segue. Um, I think everything that Lindsay talked about is perfect because I think the word that everybody always struggles with is engagement because Facebook talks about engagement and how you show up in the algorithm is that you have an engaging post and people are so confused on what that is. And the simple answer to that is Facebook looks at engagement as a conversation. So anytime somebody comments on your post or likes your post or interacts with your post in any way. And when I say Facebook, I just want to be very clear that Facebook means Instagram, Facebook means stories, Facebook means anything that social media is in that world. Um, Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same people anyway, so it all works exactly the same. So what Facebook wants you to do is they want you to have an engaging post. And then you know, people get freaked out by that word when it simply just means have a conversation, have an interaction, have, figure out a way to get people to interact on your page. And why do we care about that? Because at some point, <laughs> this mess is going to be done, and we still need to be seen. And so all the things that Lindsay talked about and all the things I'm seeing all these amazing photographers do 
online right now are things that we should be doing now and we should be doing them later and we should be doing them in the future because those are the ways we're going to get seen on social media without having to pay all those ridiculous ad prices that Facebook wants us to pay. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes it doesn't work anyway. Um, so if we want to avoid paid advertising, we got to start posting engaging posts. And, you know, some of the things that I've seen recently that have been awesome. Um, I saw uh, a photographer while well, she was in our, in the sales and marketing strategy that we did with Mar Marnie Claggett. She's reading um, out of a book to her clients, um, you know, to like a kid's book to all of her kids' clients. And she's doing it every single day and she's getting a lot of engagement off of that. And I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, just recently we did um, a pet contest. We, you know, we basically work with high school senior photographers, but at this point in everybody's life, we all just want something to take our mind off what's going on. And so we just did a simple show us your pet. Um, and we're going to pick a winner based on likes. And within an hour, we had a hundred comments and that's just something super simple that you can do to your clients, you know, to get them thinking, you know, maybe it's show us your pet. Um, let's have a cutest pet contest. Marnie did that as well. And she had over a hundred and, you know, 180, I think is what her end up, um, her people that uh, posted to her, her thread was, which was amazing. Um, you could do show us, you know, how your kids are working, you know, especially if you're, they're off of school and now they're working from home. Um, show us family recipes. There's all kinds of things that you can do to start driving engagement. And like I said, all those things that you're doing now, continue to do them when this mess is over because that is how you're gonna get seen. Um, the other thing, and I'm gonna bounce off of Lindsay again, it's important to not only have people comment on what we're doing, but we wanna comment on what they're doing. And so recently what I've been doing with our accounts is I've been scrolling, especially on Instagram, I've been scrolling through my accounts. Um, and about two or three times a week, I'll take the first few minutes of the day and I'm actually commenting on people's uh, photography or if it's a business that we're partnered with, I'll comment on a business post of some sort and actually just putting it out there and you know, saying something nice about the, the work, saying something nice about the image, um, or if it's a business where, you know, you know, just telling them that we're there and we're supporting them during this time. Um, and it's super simple to do if you just take the first couple minutes of your day and just go scroll through, all you gotta do is do five. You know, you don't, have to, don't feel like you gotta do everybody because you're never gonna be able to do everybody. Um, just do pick a couple and just pick them randomly um, it, I did it this morning um, and I put a nice little message on someone's Instagram photo and they sent me a message back and was like, thank you so much. That meant so much to me. You know, we're really struggling right now. You know, so you never know when you're going to touch somebody's life. And if we can touch one life, that's going to be amazing. You know, if, if we can support one person right now and help them out, that's, that's what we want to do. Um, and I think I'm about done because I'm not going to stay, you know, do too long here. Um, the other thing I want to say is back in 2008, uh, during the financial crisis, a lot of us, a lot of photographers really struggled. And when they did that, some of them gave up. Some of them didn't want to market. Some of them refused to market. Some of them didn't know what to do. So they just literally gave up. And what I want to say with the message I want to give to everybody today is you cannot give up. You have got to stay, stay strong. You've got to keep moving. If you keep moving, you're going to be here when this crisis is over and you're going to be stronger than before. And I know you keep hearing that and sometimes it feels like it's a lot of blah, blah nonsense, but I'm here to tell you those who pushed through back in 2008 and they made it through, they are still here today. Those who literally sat on their hands and just said, I don't know what to do. And I'm not going to do anything. And I give up. They're no longer with us as a business photographer, as a photography business. So we want to make sure that you're still doing it. Um, and one more thing, and then I'm done. Everybody here on this panel and the photography community, we're all here for you. If you are in a dark place or if you need help or if you need you know, some sort of uplifting moment, message any of us. We'll be glad to, to help you out and get you through this time. We're here for you um, and good luck and keep pushing forward and keep posting those engaging posts. I love seeing what you guys are doing on, on the, in the photography community. It is amazing. You guys are doing a great job. So keep it up. All right. Thank you so much, Darty. Um, such good information. Uh, Kia, let's have you next. Okay. Yeah, it's Kaya. And I know I just- Kaya, I sorry Kia. again. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a Lexus girl. Don't be putting me in a Kia. Nothing against Kias, but- um, uh, I'm going to call you Lexus from now on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to follow up what Darty was just saying. I really appreciate uh, Ronan doing this and making this happen. It's been a, a lifeline for me to have all my photographer friends. I've watched all of these think tank uh, webinars. I've been on uh, another one. And- 
what's really been so helpful to me is to know I'm going to be helping others. And I think that's the key to our social media strategy is looking at it as a way where we are going, uh, where I'm, I'm doing something and I'm going to be helping them. Uh, that's what we are as photographers. I mean, we're making a difference in people's lives all the time. And so just uh, extending that into social media. So specifically, I want to talk about Instagram because I'm terrible at Facebook and I don't, I think I might have an account on LinkedIn. And so I'm excited to learn from everyone else here. Um, but we have to remember what we're doing here. And so Instagram is all about uh, being aspirational. And so when you're posting on Instagram, that is something that where you, when you post in your Instagram feed, it needs to be something that they want to be, do, be like. And so you can't be post reposting crazy things, putting things that aren't part of your brand and your Instagram feed. You can put things in your Instagram stories that are more fun, but, uh, or, or more, you know, different than your normal feed, but you still have to keep that all in your same brand as you're doing it and be thinking about it. I think uh, when this all started happening as photographers, I felt like a lot of people were just frenetically posting and just going bananas. I was throwing so many things up there and we have to remember that we need to stay within our, um, we can change our tone somewhat, but we need to stay within our own brand. And uh, so I was listening to an Amy Porterfield. Um, she has a great podcast just recently. And she suggested one of the things that you do is to craft your crisis messaging for your business. And so, um, and then she said to put that all through your c communication with your clients. And so uh, we did that for each type of client that we have. And so for our high school seniors, we crafted our crisis messaging, which is your senior year matters. This is for 2020s, no matter what happens. Uh, because, you know, everything has been blown apart for them. Uh, so that's one. Um, we, and then for our 2021 seniors, we will plan together and be ready when it's time to shoot. So we're gonna plan this together. We're gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna give you stuff to do. Number three, the experience will make you feel valued, but you'll, it will also be fun and cute. And so my brand is happy. It is really happy. It is really fun. We haven't even talked about the lo loss of graduation or the loss of proms or that type of thing. Uh, what we did first is have them send us a baby picture and we posted their um, senior picture right after their baby picture and we did something fun and playful. And so I think it's important to sit down and really be strategic about what you're posting and not just go bananas. Um, and so right now with our, um, with our actual uh, family clients, I'm creating a email and it has all kinds of links where they can go and um, in Kansas school has been called off for the rest of the year. So, uh, and they aren't going to be taking grades, so nothing matters for the rest of the year. And with a 12 year old, a 15 year old, an 18 year old and a 20 year old in my house right now, only one of them has run away today. Uh, this is our first day of homeschooling. So uh, I don't know if she'll come back, hopefully if she's hungry, uh, but um, I, I know that's where my clients are too. And so that's what I'm planning to do with my family and children's clients is to create content that is positive, that is encouraging, that is honest, and that will help them. And so I'm putting that together. Good. I, I can keep going, uh, Brian, but I know there's a lot of people on here. So I'll pause and then let, we can come back to things. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, thank you so much. I love the idea of posting their senior picture and their baby picture. Um, such a great idea. And the fact it. that you're staying that you're staying positive. I know that that's a message that we, we all share. I'm going to have Jeff go next. Hi there. So basically on this one, what I, I, I want to really just introduce people to LinkedIn because I know a lot of photographers don't really use it and don't know anything about it. And then photographers who are on LinkedIn are quite scared of it because they're frightened to put content out there because they believe with it being a professional platform, you've got to be somebody you aren't and you've got to take on a new persona and be very professional and I'm a LinkedIn influencer. I've got about 26,000 photographers on my LinkedIn profile. And I, I'm just always myself. So I just go out, I be myself. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll put a shirt on if I'm doing a live, but I post content that is just me. You know, I write this stuff. I'm dyslexic. I make lots of spelling mistakes. I put stuff out there. And as long as my stuff is inspirational, informative, enjoyable, and fun and humanized, then I get the likes, I get the traction, I get the, the comments. And LinkedIn has 670 million users, active users currently. Now, this is, these are fantastic stats, 670, active, uh, 670 million active users. 
From 670 million active users, there was only 30 million optimized accounts, optimized profiles. So that means only out of that 670 million, only about 5% of people are getting found on LinkedIn. So if you have a fully optimized profile, then you're going to get seen, you're going to get eyes on you. And then out of that 670 million, only 1 million are what the LinkedIn class is a content creator. And that is creating about three to four pieces of content for the platform on a weekly basis. So it's not as bad as Facebook where you're fighting for, for, for space in the newsfeed. And the other good thing about LinkedIn, LinkedIn doesn't work on recent posts. So it works on engaging posts. So if you put a piece of content out there and it gets engagement on it, that can keep getting likes, shares and comments in the newsfeed for anything up to a month. You know, you can't get that on Facebook. You can't get that on Instagram or Twitter. You know, you get a couple of days maximum. So in order to nurture LinkedIn, it's, um, it's, it's quite easy to do. It's not, you don't have to put a lot of effort into it. And don't be scared of it just because the CEOs and professionals out there, be yourself, be inspirational, get on there, post three or four times a week, post content that you think your audience is gonna, gonna like. And the good thing about LinkedIn is it's actually a two-way thing. So LinkedIn, first of all, ranks you as a content creator if you're creating about three or four bits of content a week. And the best days is Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, okay? Because people tend to go off on a Friday. And it also uh, rec recognizes you as um, a part of the LinkedIn community as um, an engager. So if you go on and engage on about 10 or 15 pieces of content that day, not just go like, oh, cheers, or a thumbs up, or a nice picture. Put a bit of decent engagement in. What will happen is the algorithm will then say, hang on a minute, this person is taking active time to engage on other people's content. So when they post content, instead of giving them 5% organic reach, we're going to give them 15 because they're giving back to the community. So by helping somebody else, by engaging on their content, you're getting more eyes on their content for them because you've engaged on it. But when you come put to post, you're getting more eyes on, so, on your content. So by helping other people, you're helping yourself as well. So that's one of the great things about, about LinkedIn. You know, so it's, it's what I would encourage photographers to do is just start using it. Once you, it's, it's dead easy. You know, once you start putting content out and you see what sort of um, responses you're getting back from it. And incidentally, some of my clients on board my program that is the only platform they use. They get so much work from it. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, and the average earner on LinkedIn is about $80,000 a year. So they're not like the freebie hunters from Groupon who just want anything for nothing, you know? So you can get some really, really good clients on there. And all I'll say is a, is a, is a, a final thing is if anybody looks me up, Jeff Brown, the photographer's mentor on LinkedIn, if you put a bit of content out or you want me to look at your profile, just drop us a message. I can do a little video clip on LinkedIn, two minutes, give you some feedback on your profile, get you in the right direction and just get that fear of getting something out there and actually using the platform. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. So, uh, That's awesome, Jeff. And, you know, I think LinkedIn is an uh, underutilized uh, bit of content uh, out there. And so those were great tips. I took some notes and I'm going to become uh, much more active on LinkedIn and I will definitely uh, connect with you and and talk more about that. Uh, let's go to Jessica next and she can share her content. Okay, so um, for me, the place for my social media, I guess comes from the circumstance in which we're currently in. And so when I step back to take a look at my social media and figure out like, what is my lane? And what do I wanna share? Like Kaya, like Lindsay, very active with my clients. The client experience is very important to me. And honestly, I'm so much a part of my brand. Um, and for years, I've, you know, oh, I've got to be out in front of everybody. I've got to do a video today. Um, and then my team pushes me to do that. And so I have continued to still be in front of the camera and still be a face. But I also, in my humanity of who I am, I'm the person that wants to fix things. And what's been so hard about all of, all of this is I can't fix it for these kids. I can't fix it for my clients. And I don't even know when it's gonna end. And so that's kind of been my mind space. So with that in mind, 
I have tried to create content that aligns with my brand, which is optimistic, positive, uplifting, and honest as well. So I want it to always be really authentic. I don't want all of a sudden that I'm gonna go out and save my entire community and I tell you everything that I'm doing outside of my lane, of my business lane. So for me, I really try to stay within that because I can give so much within that lane. So yesterday, our governor announced that all schools are closed. And so with that immediate news, the first thing that we did was create a video and we're creating a video for each high school, celebrating all of the seniors that we photographed from that high school, talking about their uniqueness, their differences, um, celebrating them. So trying to come to a place that is celebratory in the midst of all the sadness. So that was well received from the community. They were grateful that we put something together that was optimistic and happy. I'm also every day posting something that I see that I feel like, again, is uplifting and good. One day I posted about the hearts that are being made and had my children make those hearts and put them in the window. Um, I loved Kay Eskridge's post today about the happy signs. I plan on doing that in my front window. Um, so every day picking something positive that is totally not related to my business. Then I'm posting something that is celebratory of my seniors or my families. And we are still allowed to technically operate. So I am still doing video chats and I am still um, allowing people to come in with social distancing. And I recognize that that's not the place where everybody is, um, but that we can still plan and look forward to that happy event and so, again, kind of trying to sit in that place of the things that we can control, the things that we can't, and trying to have that positive message for my community because so many really need that right now. And so positive videos, positive posts, and then saying that we're still here, we're ready to help planning with you, plan with you. So those are my three kind of approaches for where we are right now. Uh, that's, that's awesome. And I, and I think that that is so important that we – stay positive. Um, like in the pre-chat, I, I kind of said, you know, we have to meet people where they're at. We have Absolutely. to be empathetic. But um, yeah, being a positive voice is super, super important. So we're going to go to CJ next. Hey, everybody. Um, so I'm talking a little bit today um, about kind of staying active. Um, a lot of us um, throughout the country are no longer shooting. Um, we have a lot of people that can't go out, um, whether it's stay-at-home orders, things like that. Um, so it's easy for us to kind of disappear and fall off the face of the earth, um, especially on social media when we don't have content, we're not actively shooting, we can't do Facebook Live videos of the photo shoots that we're doing um, actively. Um, so it's easy for us to just kind of disappear and stay back um, and not really be out there. Um, but it's important for us to remember that social media is kind of like a billboard. Um, billboard advertising works because people view it day in, day out as they drive down the road as they go different places. Uh, very rarely is it you drive down the billboard and say, hey, I need a lawyer, let me call this dude to solve the, the, um, the, the billboard for. Um, so same thing with us. Um, we're in an industry where it's a visual industry. Um, so a lot of times they need to be able to see us, uh, see that we're active. Uh, if we just disappear, don't post anything because we're not shooting, then people forget who we are, they forget that we're there. So when they do need a photographer, they go to somebody who has been active, somebody that they you know see day in and day out posting on social media. So it's important for us to stay active. Um, with a lot of us not shooting, um, we can go back through our old shoots, um, post some pictures that we haven't posted before, go back, you know, even if you haven't done anything recently, go back six to eight months, uh, find a favorite picture from a session, repost that picture. Uh, post your um, favorite images, things like that. Um, another thing that we're going to end up doing um, is contests. So we're going to do a best of the best type contest. I think it was Darty mentioned something like that with the uh, a puppy thing. Um, but the contests bring engagement. So what we're going to find is that as we post these pictures or all these seniors or all these wedding clients, we're going to give them a prize, like an 8 by 10 print for the one that has the most votes. Um, but it's going to drive people to our websites and drive people to our social media pages because they're going to go and support their friends and family. Uh, we usually do this every year. Uh, we do a cruise contest where we give away a cruise for as part of our senior model program. Um, and we found that when we post these contests, we have 17 to 20,000 views every single year that we do this. Um, so it's driving people to our Facebook pages and Instagram pages um, for that engagement um, there. Um, another thing that we're going to end up doing um, is, is features. Um, I believe um, 
somebody I don't remember who it was, Jessica may have just mentioned it. Um, but we're going to feature each of our clients. Um, we're going to write up a little bit of a bio. We ask them questions, you know, what their favorite food is, what their favorite ice cream or favorite store, things like that. Um, and starting next week, we're going to start rolling these out. And we're going to post an individual picture, put a little, you know, this is who this person is, one of their favorite pictures, and just kind of put that out there for them to kind of celebrate what they've done. Um, what we're finding here, um, Florida's not quite as bad as some of the other places. Um, we're still allowed to operate. We're still allowed to do different things. We haven't done the total shutdown yet. Um, but schools are pretty much going to be closed for the rest of the year, it looks like. Um, so a lot of these kids are fretting their, you know, proms are being canceled. Um, weddings are being canceled left and right. So a lot of people need that positivity out there. So we're going to kind of feature each of our clients, write a little bit of blurb about them, kind of celebrate who they are, what they've done, what they've accomplished. Um, because a lot of that's getting lost in, you know, this kind of downturn that we have. Um, because a lot of things are kind of closing and kind of shutting down. Um, so the key here um, is just to kind of stay active. Um, find things to post, um, be positive, like most other people have said um, on this panel, um, and just kind of stay active with it. Remind people that you're out there. Um, try to avoid selling to people. Um, I know the temptation is, especially when you start um, running low on business, if you're closing down or things like that, the temptation is to run a sale or to get people in the door as soon as this is over. Um, try not to do that because then it looks kind of desperate and you're trying to um, you know, drag people into this on an unfortunate situation. So try to stay positive with it. Just keep posting pictures, keep your social media active, um, remind people that you're out there so that when it is, everything does turn around, when people do need photographers, they're able to remember, hey, you know, we saw so-and-so was posting these pictures, let's go to them, um, let's call them up, we need family pictures now, or we need senior pictures or whatever it is. Um, so just kind of stay active with it, um, do different things that are able to um, build that engagement and keep people on your page for that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. And uh, I love the analogy of the billboard and like, I don't need a lawyer right now, but if I did, it would be the one that I have top of mind awareness of. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we need to keep ourselves out there. Um, we're going to go to Sean next to uh, give us some insights and rock that. Hi, how's everybody doing? Um, such a great panel of people. Um, so insightful, right? So uh, I, I'm just going to go ahead and follow. Nobody has to listen to anything that I say because these people are absolutely freaking awesome. Money rock that. Uh, but if, if I had to say anything, I think one of the things that are extremely important, especially in a time like this, is that people are people, right? And you'll find that at this time, um, nobody necessarily needs a photographer. You know, our industry is discretionary spending and everybody's trying to find a way to get ahead and to make money. Um, but I think what's important is, is just as important as, as maybe trying to make money is, is setting yourself up so maybe you can do so later. Um, and one of the things that you could certainly do is, um, is help people, right? And, um, and then posting that on social media, not just to get attention, um, but everybody loves the warm and fuzzies, right? And so, for example, um, we had a live stream with our group yesterday and I just wanted to find out who needed what, right? There are a lot of people that won't say that they're hurting. Um, there are a lot of people that won't say that they need food or they need toilet tissue. So what we've done is we've put together a group of people to find out how we can stay within the rules of, uh, of the stay at home order that we have here in Michigan and still deliver food, um, to people while staying safe and staying socially distant. If people need bare necessities and supplies, making sure that we cover um, each other, making sure we reach out and say, hey, listen, we love you, right? Um, we care about you. Um, putting posts out there that, that just check on people. And, and that's been mentioned here uh, several, several times. I believe that humanity is a huge part of what we do. We just happen to capture the memories of that as photographers. But in a time where we can't really capture, I think it's, it's okay to be authentic and to do, right, to do the work. And if we can keep posting um, along that line, I think people love that stuff. They feed off of it. They, the people want to know that there's still hope in the world right? Um, there are some projects that we have done where, where as an organization, as a photography organization, we partnered with uh, entities, for example, to feed the homeless, right? And so we partnered with that entity, we took photos and all of that stuff, and we posted it um, online. You can certainly do that now. Maybe there is somewhere you can, um, maybe there are local hospitals that you can become a part of, get cleared through, right? Maybe there are things that you can do in your community that help out that, that they need much help. What that does is, is not only um, in social media, that might open up the door for opportunity in the future, even with these entities that you partner with, right? Um, people, I, I'm gonna tell you, love 
people. So give, 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 give your best and be authentic as you possibly can. Another thing, and this is the last thing, um, Brian, I know people think that I can go forever and I know how to bleed ears, I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> but um, one of the things that we've just done is I've partnered with a bunch of high school senior parents. And we just came out with a survey that we are sending online in Instagram and in Facebook, a survey for high school seniors. So in Michigan, it's looking like the school year is going to shut down. Not yet, but it's looking like it's going to shut down. So they may not have, they won't have prom, they won't have graduation. And so um, I am taking the lead because I want my studio to be the one to facilitate um, a mass prom of some sort. So we are um, going through that process. We're starting to post those surveys online, starting to get feedback. And not only that, we are getting um, a lot of engagement online from parents, um, from um, students and high school seniors uh, who may lose out on their prom this year. We're making sure when this is over, we can step right in and uh, be able to facilitate in some way, shape or form um, a mass prom. Rock that. Oh, those, those are great ideas. And I love how you kept stressing being authentic, mm. being authentic. I mean, in times of need, right, we need to be real. And how you said, you know, some people won't say they're hurting. Um, you know, we have to dig a little deeper. We have to ask the right questions and we have to be there for each other. So uh, super, super important. Um, up next, we're going to have... Um, um, Jonathan, come on, and then Bradley. And I, I think that the, the two of you together kind of have a one-two punch from, from what I understand about uh, your content. So uh, take it away. Yeah, absolutely, guys. So I'm going to keep this super short and super simple because simple always works best. And there's been some incredible kind of ideas from my fellow panelists today. I'd advise that you take them on board and take action because you have more time than ever now to actually implement some of this stuff. And one of the common themes that the fellow, my fellow panelists were talking about was engagement, right? And I can confirm that engagement is not only important for your organic reach, it's also important if you're doing paid advertising. So let me talk a little bit about paid advertising because that's my area of expertise. And a lot of people get a little bit scared about paid advertising because they've tried it in the past where they've boosted a post and they've just sent Mark Zuckerberg another $30 and got no results and they're kind of freaking out a bit, okay? So let me clear up some of those fears and worries for you. So the first thing that Facebook is good for is brand building. The second is lead generation. And the reason why so many people get paid advertising wrong is because there's so many different marketing objectives when you're setting up your campaigns on Facebook that it kind of gets a bit scary or confusing. And then Facebook themselves are actually encouraging you to boost posts. And that's where things kind of fall apart. So let me just talk to you a little bit about what you can do to you know, start building your brand at, without spending a ridiculous amount of money. And it will stand to you in the long run. So first of all, video is key. So if you look at paid advertising nowadays, Facebook is, fav is kind of allocating 70% of its inventory towards video ads over, over images. And one of the things that I'd recommend that you do, right, if you haven't set up your, your Facebook fan page yet, which I, I hope you have if you're in business, is to go ahead, get it set up, get everything organized. What you then want to do next is you want to create your business manager. And don't be afraid if this all sounds complex because I have a little bit of a surprise at the end. Um, so once you set up your fan page and your business manager, what you then want to do is sit down, take some time out, and try to create like a five or ten minute video where you are explaining to your kind of ideal client and community how your business can solve their biggest problems. Because what I see happening a lot is people talk about themselves. And when you just meet someone, people don't really care about you because they don't know you, okay? So sit down, script out a five, 10 minute video, just rough outline. How does your business help your ideal clients? Record that video, get it up there on your Facebook page as a regular post. And then 
once you set up your Facebook pixel, you can actually launch a video views campaign for as little as a dollar, a pound, a euro a day. And what happens is Facebook will drive people who are most likely to watch this video. So you're kind of generating some brand awareness to, you know, kind of cold traffic. So these people don't know you yet. And what this will help you do is, first of all, it helps you to build that KLT with your client so that know, like, and trust. Because it's important to remember that people buy from people who they know, like, and trust, right? Secondly, you're going to be staying top of mind. And thirdly, what it actually does is it helps you to build up a custom audience for your pixel. So when you have enough video views, you'll then be able to actually create a custom audience from the data on your pixel and retarget those at a later date when we're all back up, ready to rock again. And then what you can do is drive them to further engagement campaigns. And what Bradley is gonna talk about in a minute is how to generate leads and use funnels for generating those leads. Now, just before I go, if that sounds a little scary, what I'm actually gonna do is for each of those steps, I'm gonna create a series of videos over the next few days and I'll post it in the 3XM Insiders group. So if you're interested in doing this, you can follow each of the videos step by step. Just tag me on, on the videos if you have any questions and I'd be happy to um, answer them for you. And another common theme was, you know, being positive and being active because mindset is key to getting us all through this. And it's important to kind of remember that this is not permanent. So this is temporary. So just stay positive, keep taking action now and prepare for the future when we're, we're back up and rocking again. Awesome. Yeah, that is, that is so important. And yes, it, that did sound a little complex to me. So I'm going to have to uh, take you up on those uh, tips and, and, you know, do the work. I think that's probably what one of the things I've heard these ideas before, but I haven't done the work. I need to take this time you know, connect with an expert like you, do the work, and I'll be better positioned uh, in the future. So thank you for that. And uh, I think that segues us to Bradley really well. Yeah. Hi, guys. So to give a bit of a brief background on what I do, I, I do a lot of paid advertising. Paid advertising, especially through Facebook, brings me in around 120 paid sessions into my diary for my studio each month. So I, I really build funnels and I drive traffic. So an idea of what a funnel is, it's a step-by-step -step process that takes a cold lead, um, like an advert you put, somebody, you put in front of somebody, all the way to them being a customer that comes into your studio that spends money with you, which is what we all want at the end of the day. Um, so if anybody follows Gary Vee at all, he's a really great social media guy. He often talks about jab, jab, hook. The funnels are, are, are the hook that you want to do. So everyone's really talked really well about creating your content and, content and getting your jabs out there. Your funnel is what you want to do. Paid advertising is what you do when you want to create a large volume of bookings for your diary. So the funnel software that I use is called ClickFunnels. I'd recommend everyone go have a look at it and check it out. You get a two-week free trial on it. If not, it's $99 a month, so it's a bit expensive, uh, but it's, it is worthwhile to have a look at to build funnels. You can also do it via HTML, WordPress sites, things like that. Um, so... For our industry, the two most common types of funnels I use are lead magnets and director offers. So a director offer is, is really simple. It's a two-page funnel. You've got your advert, you direct them to a landing page, from the landing page to a thank you page or an action page. So an idea for an example is our boudoir shoots, they're normally £95 to book in. We do a midweek boudoir offer where it's £45. That's the offer. Directs beef onto our landing page. On our landing page, it's important like what uh, Jonathan was saying about know, like, and trust. So we have a load of branded content on there. We use a lot of videos. Um, so each video we film is centered around a certain objection. So whether it be what underwear to bring, what to expect, I'm really nervous. We cover each objection so people can have a video catalog of what to watch. It lets them know who we are, lets them know the studio environment they're coming into. It's, it's a really great Q&A. They fill their details in so then we can then follow those customers up um, as, as warm leads, basically. And then when they get put through to the thank you page afterwards, 
it's um, it, it thanks them for entering, but we link that to our online booking system. So we use Acuity for that. Acuity is a really great online booking tool. So the way it works is because with my team, I don't want to spend a lot of time doing telesales. So we divert traffic for them to online book because it really works well for us. It might not work well for others. It all depends on your, the volume of sessions you need in weekly, monthly, yearly. Um, but if you, even if you don't use the online booking, I would suggest setting like a Facebook group up. If you've got a, a specialized group designated for each niche that you do, where you can invite people in, they can share images and stories with each other. We do that really well with Boudoir. The other type of funnel we run is a lead magnet. So instead of an offer, you're giving something away for free. So like a guide, a how to top tips works really well if the service you're offering is quite high priced. I know a lot of photographers have like thousand, like 500 pounds, thousand dollar session fees that you don't want to discount. A lead magnet's fantastic because you can give tips away, you can give a guidebook away, you can give some video courses away to customers that you can create for free that then warm them up um, to who you are and what you do. And then you can follow that up with, you know, more paid advertising later or email offer sequences. So, the key things to think about when you're building a funnel or what you're keeping on a page is trust. That's why, you know, face to face camera, filming yourself talking is really important. Create a sense of urgency around what you're doing, have an offer or make it midweek or you've only got a certain amount of sessions to book in. Even if you put in how many sessions you've got, so we shoot 10 boudoirs a week. I make that known that we shoot 10 boudoirs a week. If you're not booked in, you're not booking in this week and it creates a sense of urgency. Um, handle all your objections. So whatever objection or a reason why somebody's not going to book in with you, film a video and answer it and put it out there so people can understand and see it. Um, and then with these funnels as well, you can also build warm audiences up a bit like what Jonathan was saying. So then you build a really great warm audience up. You can then target your top fans. You can create lookalike audiences. So then Facebook really optimizes to put your adverts and content out to the best people possible. Um, just a few action points to do before, before I end. Uh, make sure you look at ClickFunnels and Acuity. Uh, Acuity is free, if, even if you've only got one calendar, so you can play around with it and learn how to use it. Again, ClickFunnels, two week free trial. You can, if you've got multiple email addresses, you can, that can go on forever um, until you know how to use it. It's what I did. I had like nearly six weeks free for ClickFunnels trying to figure it out. Um, Identify the niches and offers that you run. So think of offers that you can run in for direct offer funnels or lead magnets you can run, um, you know, guides you can create. Film some content, handling common questions and objections. We've got an awful lot amount of time here. We can actually get out and create these, these funnels, these really high converting funnels. Have a look and understand Facebook Pixel uh, because that's going to be really key in order to get, get your adverts out. If anyone's wondering, the campaign objective I always use is conversions. So that it, it, when you're going through the business manager, uh, it's conversion ad type you want to use. Don't use landing page views because Facebook will just send really crappy traffic to your websites. You want conversions, it will convert, convert a lot better. Um, yeah, and, uh, that's it. That, that's me. Make, you know, you've got, we've got an awful lot amount of time. Make sure you use it. And me and Jonathan are going to be putting out some templates and some ideas for everybody with funnels because I think it's a lot easier to actually see one working um, than it is you know, to, to try and imagine one. So I'll, I'll be sharing some of my funnels that I've used for the studio. You can have a look, see what type of videos we use, see what we do, and then you can create from there. So yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Such great content and such nice detail that you guys shared. Um, you know, for a lot of us, I think these uh, ways to do business that is strategic, right? That was one of the words that we wanted to really make sure we used. And I think we ended it with um, a process in a very strategic mindset, doing the videos, answering the objections, having a lead magnet, having a certain number of sessions. I mean, it doesn't sound like you're just kind of winging it. You have a system and a plan. And everybody kind of built up not only community and posting and who we are now and who we're going to be in the future. Such great content from everybody. Um, I see Ronan has jumped back on. There was one question in the uh, chat, which was um, about attracting new clients. And I, I think we kind of uh, talked about that. Um, but uh, Ronan, take it away. 
Yeah, Brian, I, I think you guys have, have, have summarized that. So for John, your question was, how do we attract new clients? I think you've got that, you know, reach out to your community, discover how you can help people out there, be authentic with that, get to know Facebook so you can set up your funnels. So when you are ready and we're, we get through this and we are going, all going to get through this, thank you for that too, Ray Lowe. Ray Lowe has been running a business for over 40 years in London. So he's seen a lot of these crises and he's, he's the man on there saying, we're going to get through this. So if he says it, we're definitely going to get through it. Um, the question, uh, the first question I have is for Jeff. Jeff, Cynthia wants to know, do you need to use premium for, for LinkedIn? Uh, no, not at all. So um, LinkedIn, the, the only advantage with LinkedIn Premium is it lets you uh, do a, a, a more advanced search when you're searching for people and it will allow you to connect with more people and build your network. So if you're just on the free trial, um, you, you probably get about maybe 15 to 20 connection requests you can send out a day to people. On Premium, you can probably go up to about 70 to 100. Um, and you can actually have a free trial of premium every tr every 12 months for 30 days but i wouldn't recommend she tries the free trial until she knows her profile is fully optimized so if she wants to drop me a message on linkedin i can check her profile i'll give her some feedback and then once she's she's happy then then go and have the 30 day free trial at least you're going to maximize it better that's brilliant jeff thank you so much um, the other question then we had it's for cj cj um, in your competitions you run are you inviting people who post, say, enter the competition? Are you inviting them to ask family members to vote? Was that how you were driving additional traffic? Yeah, so the, the way that we run it, um, it's all done through our Facebook page. Um, so we create a gallery on the Facebook page that has 20 or 30, however many images for the, for the entries. Um, and we make the people come to our Facebook page to basically like the picture. Um, that gives them the vote. Uh, they can share it to their friends and family, but they have to be able to go back to our Facebook page to be able to uh, vote on that um, in the gallery. Um, the reason for that is that I can't keep track of shares and I can't keep track of, you know, Grandma Sue has 800 people that like the picture. I can't see any of that stuff. Um, but also more importantly for us is that it drives people back to our social media pages. Um, so now they're going from their page to our page. Um, a lot of times they browse other stuff as well. So as we're posting more pictures, they're able to see more of that. Um, so it's to get them to our page, um, basically, for that. Great. And Bradley, last question I have is for you. And that is, um, so people always ask, so, you know, if I'm going to do all this Facebook stuff and I'm going to build funnels out, and when I say Facebook, I'm talking like Darty said, it's driving traffic from any, any platform to yep. my funnel. But in getting people to your funnel and then they convert to a booking, can you share with us the average cost per booking? And I'll do the translation into dollars for you and stuff. If you give us yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so, so we, we spend around fifteen hundred pounds a month, uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand a month on on Facebook adverts. It depends on the niche that you're running and the type of advert I'm running. So if I if I run a direct offer, I'll get a better conversion. So for boot it's around twenty five pounds per booking. For, twenty five pounds per booking. So yeah. I just translate that. So twenty five pounds is roughly twenty eight euro, and it's about. 33 us dollars and it's about 40 canadian dollars yeah boudoir average is around 25 overall across the studio hovers around 15 so we've got other niches that are a bit cheaper to book in um again it all, all depends on the offer you're running as well if you want to get paid sessions in your diary it's going to be more expensive if you're running something like a competition or a giveaway it's going to be much cheaper you can get your booking costs down to for boudoir for us cheapest spin is like three pound um, okay. and, and you have a pretty busy studio. So how much of your studio are you, are, are, is coming from your Facebook funnels activity? Uh, digital marketing, probably about 75%. 75%. Um, I mean, it's probably more because we get a lot of referrals, but the referrals are from customers we've, we've pulled in from, from digital marketing, basically. Brilliant. So, Brian. We, oh, go on. Sorry, sorry, Bradley. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, Apologies. Uh, <laughs> Brian, back to you. That's all the questions we have today.
Awesome. Well, what a great group and such great content. And uh, I'm going to have to watch it again myself. And I was taking notes and, and then I realized we're recording this. So, um, you know, watch it again, share it with all of your friends and your network, uh, get more people to watch all this great content. Thank you, Ronan, for um, the idea and the inspiration to create these um, wonderful ways to communicate and I'm just so excited that we're all coming together. And I want to thank everybody for your time. And uh, I'll, I'll end with a, a little Sean Lee. And I'll say, uh, I hope you guys all rock that. How's that? Good stuff. I think we should all do that together. Are we ready? One, two, three. Rock that. Rock that. that. <laughs> rock that. Thank you, guys. Good night. Take care, everybody. Take Cheers. care. Thank you. See you, guys.